Hello everybody, so nice to see you again and welcome to my garden here at the Hunterstrast in Edinburgh. Tosh seems to have decided to settle down on my knee for the afternoon, um, which maybe isn't good news but we'll do the best we can. It's the last week in February and we've had quite a mixed winter. We've had some really quite mild weather. We've had here in Edinburgh about a week of snow and ice and it didn't do the garden any favours at all. But the garden's resilient. Most of it will bounce back okay. When I look outside, there's really quite a lot of brown and dull green to be seen. It's not nearly as colourful as it would be in the summer. But if I look a bit closer, there are lots of things that are poking their heads above ground and making such a welcome appearance and just reminding me that spring is round the corner and it can't come soon enough. Today is really quite cold and so I decided I would go for a wander around the garden and just to check up on what was coming away nicely, what wasn't coming away and just make a list of things to do. So Tosh and I went round the garden. He's not an awful lot of help but he does like to come. There are so many snowdrops in the garden now. 35 years ago a kind friend gave me a few clumps and just look what we've got now. We also came across a few clumps of these very pretty little iris reticulata. And this bed has got a wonderful display of crocus. Yellow, purple, cream. And I was really quite surprised to see how many daffodils were in flower because this is not a sheltered spot. But these daffodils are growing in a raised bed and I think the earth is slightly warmer there. I found hellebores too. And these little beauties are called Painted Lady. And I found various jobs to do as well. Now today wasn't really the day for doing jobs, it was just too cold. So I decided to make a list and do some of the jobs and leave the others for another day. And Tosh is going to leave us, I think. Or possibly not. Anyway, sit back and enjoy. This bed, quite close to the house, is usually quite colourful for most of the year. However, I can already see a couple of contenders for my to-do list. This penstemon was beautiful last year, but it does get through the winter better if you don't cut it back till spring. So now will be an excellent time to trim off all the dead stuff. I planted this grevillea last year, but the winter hasn't been kind to it at all and you can see it's looking a little bit sad. This may recover or it may not recover, time will tell. My lovely rhododendron called Christmas Cheer is really beginning to look pretty, but when I look at that I can see something else to add to the list. Considering that the fence is nearly 40 years old, it's really done well, but from time to time these planks come off and all it takes is a couple of screws to put them back on again and it'll be fine for maybe another 40 years. Here's another of my old favourites, Winter Jasmine. It started flowering probably in October last year and it's kept on going throughout the winter apart from a short spell when the cold weather zapped all the flowers. I only planted these last year but look at them in flower already. This is a plant that really earns its keep. My winter pansies looking a bit shabby something else for the list. These pretty pink flowers on this Viburnum bodnantense smell heavenly but when I look up behind them I can see a really tangled mess of clematis. Beautiful when in flower but it does tend to make a takeover bid so that's another thing for my list. So here's my list and I'm going to make a start on it today. First of all the fence. I've put a couple of screws in the top and in the middle and that should hold it steady for a good while. It's here that the local wildlife have a rat run to get in and out of the garden and that's probably contributed to the plant coming off. So that's the first item on the list ticked off. I've deadheaded the pansies and that's all I'm going to do for today. That still leaves me with quite a bit to do. 
Some hebes are not too hardy, but this one has been fine for years. But it's taken quite a beating this winter, so that's another thing for my list. I'll cut it back hard soon, and I expect it'll come away fine. I've not lost a hebe before, so fingers crossed. And this Fotinia, called Pink Crispy, has got burnt a little, but it will come back just fine. So nothing to be done here. These dead hydrangea flower heads do really contribute to the garden looking quite brown and dull in the winter. But unfortunately, we mustn't touch them yet. And the reason for that is, as soon as you take off these flower heads, the leaves and the buds will take this as a sign that they have to start growing in earnest. And when the next frost comes, which it undoubtedly will, you will lose all of the new leaves and all of the new buds, and it will not kill the plant, but it will delay the flowering significantly. This is a job definitely best left to when the risk of frost is over. Well, I've made a start on my list now, and the rest will wait for another day. I'm so glad you were able to join me today, and I look forward to seeing you again in a week or two, when we'll see what else is needing doing in the garden. In the meantime, bye-bye.